So as many of us are working from home, this is a great opportunity to review some of the Vectorworks tools and workflows that allow us to do that as effectively as possible. And what I'm going to discuss now is project sharing. Now this is distinct from file referencing, which is another very useful way to collaborate with remote colleagues. But I'll address file referencing in another talk right now. Project sharing is really appropriate where you tend to have more complex or larger projects and you have multiple users generally in the same discipline, so all architects, for example, who are working in and around the same project at the same time. And the way it works is different portions of the project are partitioned to different users with various administrative or working privileges. Each user has his or her own level of privileges, giving them more or less access or control over the file as a whole. And all of the individual's work is referenced back into a project file. So you'll notice that the file that I've opened here is just a regular Vectorworks drawing file. It's got the .vwx extension at the end. You'll see that with project sharing, we have two new kinds of files that are created. One is a vwxw. That's a working file, and that's a file that each user is going to be working on respectively. And then all of those working files all are linked together to a VWXP, a project file. And Vectorworks automatically creates the project file and individual working files when you activate project sharing. Nobody actually works directly in the project file. That file is fed into or acquires all of its information from the individual working files. So pretty straightforward. Under File, you would go ahead and activate Project Sharing, and you would get this dialog box. Now we're going to automatically create a working file after the setup is complete. Depending on my network needs, I might choose SMB or AFP. I just go with the default, and then I avoid mixing them up. You can see that Vectorworks is automatically giving me administrative privileges because I'm the one who's setting up project sharing. And there are different levels of privileges for everybody from administrative all the way down to read only, and they have different levels of control. So with administrative and project, you can have access to more layers and so forth. With administrative, you can actually add more users. Whereas uh, layer restricted, maybe somebody only gets a particular layer assigned to them. So if I actually had people with me or this wasn't a demonstration, I could go ahead and add more users. And you'll notice that my username and full name are taken from my machine login. So this is my user account on my Mac or Windows machine. So I'll go ahead and go to the next. And here are all of the layers, design and sheet layers. And those can only be modified by project and administrative level privileges if I mark any of them with an asterisk. So I may decide that the sheet layers only get to be modified by the project level privileges or something like that. Whatever is appropriate to your particular project and how you're working and the team that you have. And then there's a backup protocol. Creates a certain number of backup files for every, say, five commits either in the same location as the project file or in a custom location, and you can keep a certain number of backups. So these are distinct from the backups that you create for your Vectorworks drawing files in the Vectorworks preferences, but it's a similar concept. So now having done that, Vectorworks is going to take a few moments to generate a working file, and here it is. You'll notice that it's added my name to the end of the file, and the extension is no longer VWX. It's VWXW, and in big bold letters it says working file. So I know now that I'm in my own working file. And if I want to make a change to something, so for example, I will uh, select these uh, objects and I will, for example, delete them. Immediately Vectorworks prompts me to confirm that I want to check these items out, these objects out. And by checking out, that means assume ownership of them so that two people can't be manipulating the same object at the same time. And I can also go ahead and check out every object in this floor one layer so that I don't constantly have to deal with this dialog box. 
Uh, now there are times when it's appropriate to check out objects on a object by object basis, but typically the way you're working is that uh, you will assign a layer to somebody and they'll stick to their layer or layers. So I'll go ahead and check everything out on this layer. I can make a comment so that anyone uh, else in the project can see these lists of comments and see what I'm up to if there's an important comment for me to make. And now having done that, I can go ahead and move around in the same layer. And for example, I can uh, force select this piece of furniture and I could move it over 24 inches, whatever I want to do, and that dialog box does not come up again because I'm working in the same layer. When I'm done with all of my changes and I'm ready to commit my changes back to the master project file, then I would go ahead and under file, right under project sharing, it says save and commit. So that saves my changes and it commits them to the project file and I can go ahead and write some comments and I can go ahead and release the checked out layers and objects that I have assumed temporary ownership over if I want to. So I will go ahead and hit OK. And then when I'm done, here's my project file. It wants me to save it. So I'll go ahead and save it right here in this folder that I'm using for today's purposes. And then when I'm completely done and I want to go ahead and close and release, then the file will close. The file closes, and here I am back in my project folder. And you can see that there's this file with my name appended to it, but also the project file has been created. So it is, again, the amalgam of everybody's working files, but nobody actually works in this project file. If I were to double click on this project file, it would automatically open a working file for me. And then finally, after everybody has done all of their work and saved and committed all their changes and everything's well coordinated, then when I'm ready to wrap this project up and turn it back into a Vectorworks drawing file, then I would just go to File and Save a Copy As. And this time I would go ahead and you know remove my name from the end, and you can see that I can choose to save it as a project file, a working file, or just a Vectorworks drawing. And that's what I would do is turn it into a Vectorworks drawing and hit Save. I'll go ahead and close my working file. And you can see there's the Vectorworks file that I just created. And once I'm confident that everybody's work has all been turned in, so to speak, and everything's well coordinated, I can delete the project and working files. and if I double click on this file, it just opens like a regular Vectorworks drawing file. So that's the basic concept of project sharing. There are a couple of things to be mindful of. One is like any kind of collaboration, whether it's referencing or changing PDFs and DWGs or project sharing, really the key to this working well is good communication between all of your team members. So that's where the notes are helpful as you annotate your work and your saves and commits, but it's especially important to have just regular communication and let people know, oh look, I'm going to be working in plan this afternoon, making such and such changes, just so that everybody knows what they're up to. That's just good working practice. Now, sometimes depending on what kind of cloud file storage solution you have, you can get some conflicts where the project file isn't fully synced in quickly enough with the various working files, and then you might get a couple of error statements. So if that ever comes up for you, really the best thing to do is to go ahead and have everybody save and commit their work, close their files, go ahead and save back down to a regular Vectorworks drawing file, and then restart the whole process. It only takes a few minutes, and it helps keep things nice and clean. So that's really it on project sharing. Of course, there's a lot more details to it that you'll find in the help resources and online, but I hope this will give you an idea of how this could be very useful as you're working together apart.